Hello, this is another installment in the washboard sharpening system video series. I'm going to talk a little bit more about pressure. Um, it's uh, very important to manage it anytime you're sharpening, and I'm going to uh, go through some of the points on the washboard where it's a little different from uh, a lot of other stones and tools out there you can use to sharpen stuff. Uh, basically, um, if you're using sandpaper, lapping film, whatever, it's going to be just like a stone. You're going to use very light pressure. Um, it should be in the neighborhood of half a pound or less. In reality, probably closer to a quarter pound. Just enough to take the, uh, take the steel off. Um, with some abrasives, you don't get enough, enough bite on whatever steel you're using. Sometimes with natural stones, whatever, you might have to use a little more pressure. It's all a question of pressure and abrasive properties. Now with silicon carbide um, sandpaper, you don't need a whole lot of pressure um, and it'll take the steel right off. So first thing I'm going to do this is a convex edge, a nice little Bark River uh, Bravo Necker. Um, haven't used it in a long time, so I'm going to give it a touch up and use it for the purposes of this video. Anytime you're doing a convex on any type of stone, um, if you're not entirely sure of what you're doing, you can just make a couple lines and this will show you where you are if you're going to use a, a rolling technique on a hard stone. If you're using a softer stone, you could still do this and it will show you how much conformability you have, whatever. Um, on the washboard, it's pretty firm, um, even with the sandpaper backing, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of, of wrist roll to form that, that convex. Let's see if I can do this without tearing the sandpaper. Now right now I'm just coaxing that that blade across the paper. I'm using just enough pressure to feel the texture of the washboard. And the swarf is building up on the high points. I can see it. And it's very important, especially with sandpaper, if you press too hard right off the bat you're going to ruin the sandpaper. And this even goes for using sandpaper over a flat surface. Um, it's a paper. It's an abrasive um, adhered to it, and if you do, um, so you can see the sharpie marks are slowly disappearing. If you do too much pressure, you'll grind that swarf right into the paper alongside the abrasive. It's not going to come out. Your paper will never be the same. Um, sandpaper will wear out over time anyway, and that's why I really like a light touch, and then I like to clean it off, and I like to move all over the paper. I don't. If I just hit one area, I'm going to be in trouble pretty quick the paper's going to wear out. So I can see I'm getting close to the edge. Um, I got a little bit of black left on the tip here, some down here. Almost have to lay it flat on the paper to get rid of that last little sharpie mark back here. I got a little bit on the tip and I'm just going to work that down. I think that's still there because it, uh, it rolled a little more than I'd like it to. I'm just going to pull some of that metal off. It might take me more time than I'd like it to, but... Now while I'm doing this, I'm using very light pressure. Um, when I go to a, a compound part of this operation, I'm going to use a little more pressure, um, which is counter to most other systems, pretty much every other method out there. Normally when you go to a lighter, uh, a finer abrasive uh, applied to leather or whatever else, you don't want to press hard because what's going to happen is the paper is going to, um, it's going to have some give and your, your edge is going to round. Well the washboard, especially if you pre-compress the paper when you get to the compound stage, um, doesn't really experience that, at least not to the same degree. It, you know, on a microscopic scale, you might see a very tiny amount, but absolutely nothing like you would see with um, uh, leather or even paper over a stone, which is pretty tough in its own right. And because you're working with a bunch of, of high points, and I'm working the sandpaper, I'm using just enough pressure to use the points as, uh, as a reference so I can feel where the apex is. If and with a very little bit of practice, you'll be able to feel exactly where you are on the, on the edge between the shoulder and the cutting edge. Um, 
And then with the, uh, when you switch to the compound, you're going to use the pressure for a slightly different reason. So you're, you're going to be able to use a little more, especially if you're using the compound for a touch-up. Because at that point, um, you're not worried about rounding the edge. You want to drive the abrasive with a little more pressure against the steel. Otherwise, all you'll be able to do with your compound is polish. And that's why the prevailing wisdom is, well, if you're stropping, um, you need a fairly heavy grit if you're going to restore a worn edge, any amount of real wear on an edge with a regular strop. Otherwise, you're just going to round the edge. But the washboard's mighty, mighty dense. And, uh, and all those points, when you start applying pressure, um, generate an awful lot of push that you can use to turn your, your regular, regular sheet of paper into a hone, pretty much. I'm just going to use one sheet. In reality, actually, you know what, I'm going to use two sheets. It's a convex edge. As a rule, I want a little bit of soft. Um, when I get to the final step, which is burnishing, I'm going to, uh, I'll just use one sheet. And I'll, and I'll roll it just like I did on the sandpaper. Actually, I'll have to do that as well with this because even two sheets of paper isn't going to give me enough of a deflection to follow the curve on this convex edge. So right now I'm compressing the paper down. I don't want any extra give on it at all. Um, anything more than the two sheets of paper is going to give me. I don't want it flopping around. Or, and I'm not going to be applying enough pressure to compress the paper. So this just helps me out. If you're using really light paper, you don't have to take that step. If you're using heavier paper, you might want to really bear down. So now I'm taking my compound, applying it. I can see where it's catching on the high points, which is good. Now I'm not just using this for a final polish, although in this case I just sharpen the edge, so I pretty much am, but if I were using it for maintenance, I'd be doing the exact same thing. Now I'm going to roll it just a little bit, and I'm pretty sure even from there, you can see right off the bat, there's a whole bunch of metal coming off of there. Um, this compound's made to maintain and refine. Now if I want to get a little more of a polished edge from it, I can just go lighter to the point where I can just barely feel the washboard texture very similar to what I did with the sandpaper. But if I want to remove some metal and grind over the top of those uh, 600 grit sandpaper grind scratches, then I've got to use a little more pressure. And I'm going to use the whole thing. And now as I drop it back down on the flat of the, well, the convex closest to what is the shoulder, the spine. There's a little shoulder on this guy, but. I can actually go back and forth. I'm not going to cut that paper, but I'm very close. This is a very acute edge on this thing. I'll do the same over here. Normally, I will uh, I'll do one pass, fairly heavy. Fairly heavy pressure. So I want to get some grinding action out of that compound. I think I'm doing good. I'll take a look, check for a burr. See one? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to give it a cheat a little bit. Drag it on the wood. See if we can get rid of that thing so I don't have to go back to the sandpaper. It's being a little sloppy here. And frequently, the compound on paper can get rid of that bear, so we'll see if it can or if it's just going to keep flipping. When you're going edge trailing anything, the tendency is definitely going to be a little more prevalent that the burr will flip. because what's there is loaded up pretty well with 
dwarf from the edge. Polish the back. You might say, well, why not just use a finer hone? You could, but the advantage of the washboard is that your finishing step is also your maintenance step. Um, and as long as you get on it, your head just stays the same way. If you were using a coarser compound, a finer compound, whatever, it's always going to maintain that. And the uh, using the, the paper hone or the paper stropping that's this dense, you get a nice crisp edge with a lot less burr formation than you might off of a fine hone. That burr appears to be gone, and if it's not, it certainly will be by the time I uh, finish this off burnishing on regular paper. So now I'm probably using two or three times the amount of pressure that I used on the sandpaper. And that's pretty much gonna not gonna change a whole lot. You can use the only thing you have to watch out for is if you if you ride that corner, your edge could collapse. The skirt of your edge will just push right out. You'll deform it. Um, to a lesser extent, that can happen in the middle area, but it's a lot less likely because uh, there's just a little more surface area. But you ride that outside corner, you gotta really be careful. Um, if it's a recurve edge, just realize that the same amount of pressure is not needed. You can go right back to using a very light touch and the actual pressure that the edge is seeing because it's more or less a single point of contact is very high. Got to be careful. Uh, I'm just going to go to a regular sheet of paper here. This guy's been pre-compressed big time. Um, I'm going to use a little more pressure yet again and uh, the advantage to this now, aside from causing any damage to the to the edge, so it takes a little bit of trial and error. Initially I'm going to go pretty light, and right now I'm following the curve. And what's happening is I'm pulling some of the abrasive off that I, from the compound and the swarf. The other thing that's happening is I'm burnishing the edge. The, the paper with these fine points underneath is, is applying so much pressure that it's actually smoothing a lot of the high points on the steel where the grind path was, grind tracks. So I'm actually I'm burnishing a finer edge here. I'm also cleaning it. I'm also making it a little more uniform. If you were going for a really smooth polished edge, you might use a finer compound. You might use multiple sheets of paper. Um, you'd have to experiment to find out what gives you the exact edge. What I'm going for here is like a pretty refined user's edge. Uh, I describe it as being about a 4K Japanese waterstone or somewhere around 1200 grit um, standard. Now I'm going to elevate the spine just a little bit. This is going to concentrate the pressure at the tip even more. If you were to do this with abrasive, you'd round the tip for sure. Um, there might be some very microscopic rounding of the edge at this point. Um, it, in my opinion, is no more than a degree or two. And this edge is, means business now. It's totally restored. Um, it's got a pretty nice shine to it. Uh, not mirror, you know, maybe a satin. I can wipe the fingerprints off. Uh, but that's pretty much the long and short of it. You can manage the pressure to create the edge you want. Um, burnishing as a final step and cleaning. If you uh, if you want to keep the edge as fine and you know uniform as possible. Um, I did a test using uh, chromium oxide the other night on a couple sheets of paper to try to get the finest edge I could. And it did turn out pretty uniform, pretty fine. Uh, maybe not as good as you could get off of a fine hone going to a leather strop and then to a uh, horse hide. I, I'm not going to claim that. But as far as a, a real quick, well refined user's edge, uh, you'll get there no problem. And you can maintain it. And you know, of course, that's across the grain. This guy's a real nice slicer, so um, 
performance is going to be really good. And it is, of course, still three finger sticky. The other thing you have to watch out for, if you're burnishing the edge as a maintenance step, you can only do that a couple times before you have to go back to the compound. And the reason for that is as you burnish, it's, it's, it's like a, a light version of stealing an edge. Um, there's a lot less danger of, of causing any damage to the edge, I think, than there is with a steel. And it's a lot more tolerant of slight variations in angle, um, certainly more tolerant of pressure. Um, but the, uh, the end result is the same, and so over time you will start to cause some damage to the edge if you don't go back, use an abrasive to pull some of that metal off the tip, the apex, and then burnish it again. Um, you can also, of course, go straight to the paper, burnish an edge off the 600 grit sandpaper, even off the 320 grit sandpaper, whatever. You're still going to get some burnishing effect. Um, at the real lower end, it's not as pronounced because it's burnishing and it's it's not able to really smear down across the, the high points on your grind path to make a more unified cutting edge. But with the 600 grit, it certainly can, and anything smaller, it does a very nice job. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.